God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Initiation really is the idea of the means by which the wrath of God is turned away from us. And uh, obviously, uh, there are two places in the New Testament where it's especially important in Romans chapter 3, where uh, Paul speaks about Jesus Christ being the propitiation for our sins. And similarly, in 1 John, Christ is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only but for the sins of the whole world. And the background to it is the offering of a particular kind of sacrifice in the Old Testament. There are different kinds of sacrifices in the Old Testament. Some of them are sacrifices of thanksgiving, but others of them are sacrifices in which the individual not only lays his hands on the animal that is being sacrificed to say, this is my sacrifice, but to say, God is giving me the privilege of this sacrifice taking my place to bear the judgment against my sin that I deserve. And these are all ultimately types, we might say, pictures of what the Lord Jesus Christ would do. And this is the reason why Jesus' uh, Jesus words on the cross are so significant because when he cries out, my God, my God, why am I forsaken? The answer is because he is the one on whom our sins have been laid as a propitiatory sacrifice to absorb the judgment of God against us in order that we might be set free. The Colonists of Christ, Creed, next on So What? So let the wind go, so let the rain go You can't blow the house down with a foundation of God So let the wind go, so let the rain go You can't blow the house down with a foundation of God Hi, I'm Don Wade. And I'm Chris Dorman. And welcome back to So What? Boy, that was quite an intro, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Man, yeah. what's that have to do with the Apostles' Creed? <laughs> Man, how do we unpack that? Hey, you know what? I want to. So we need to start by actually thinking about thinking about something really super important. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. I want you guys to go with me now. I want you to think about an act when Stephen he preaches and he's directly speaking and responding to the high priest. Okay. And he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, man. And these man, people are getting, I mean, you can just sense that their blood is going to start to boil now about this. And what is the response that people have to Stephen? Well, they, they get so upset that they drag him out of town. They, they, tell, the, they tell this guy that we're, get, we're going to kill you, man. And it's like they, they plug their ears. They don't want to hear what he has to say. And they, and they drag him out and they stone him to kill him, the first mm -hmm. martyr. And what's his response? He ran away, he was scared to death, he was afraid. Oh yeah, my right. gosh, what's gonna happen to right. me? Oh, they no. drug him out, he didn't run out of town, they drug him out. And as they do this and they're stoning him, he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So he faced martyrdom with real courage, oh, real courage, okay? <sighs> I mean, he had a heavenly vision of Christ right. and, and he prayed for the, those who, who murdered him, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, then, then, so that was a, he was the first Christian martyr. An, a, another famous Christian martyr was a man by the name of Polycarp, who in 160 AD was executed by being burned at the stake. He, he's famous for being the last 
living connection to the apostles because Polycarp was a, a, a disciple of the apostle John. So he, so he was cool. a big deal. He's a very prominent early church leader. And he was eventually turned over to Rome because he was a Christian. Right. And, and the governor, the proconsul, was saying, look, call upon the name of Caesar. Swear your fortunes to, to Caesar and, and reject atheism, which Christians were considered atheists because they didn't have any visible gods to look at. So they were considered, yeah. And he says, no. And he said, condemn the atheists. So Polycarp looked at the crowd around him and condemned the atheists, right? Which really pissed the pro-council off, right? Because, <laughs> because Polycarp called him an atheist. And he said, look, I'll, fine, if that's your attitude, I'm just gonna throw you to the lions. And he says, okay, throw me to the lions. That's just fine. I'm not afraid. He says, oh, the lions aren't a problem? Fine, then I'll just burn you alive. He goes, you know what? That's fine, because I understand the fires of torment that last for all eternity, and I would rather be burned alive for a moment and face eternity with Christ than forsake Christ and spend an eternity wow. in the fires of hell. So bring on your worst. He faced death with real courage, real courage. Wow. And then you think about even in the Reformation, Chris, mm. in England, the English oh, Reformation, yeah, 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 yeah. Ridley and Ridley and Latimer, 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 and these men again, they're going to be burned at the stake. They're going to be killed for you know believing the gospel and proclaiming yeah. the gospel. And they echo the words of Polycarp, and he's, I think it's Latimer's trying to yeah uh, to encourage Ridley. Ridley to encourage Ridley says play the man, be so strong, says, be strong. We've got this because God has us. Right, right. They wow. all, all of these men faced very difficult circumstances yeah. um, with a common strength and resolve. That's the word, resolve. Yeah. They had, a, they had an assurance of their salvation. They were sure where they were going, and so they were not afraid of the, the temporary terror that they faced, okay? Now, I want you to think about, I want you to think about Christ, and the, the title of this podcast is intentionally provocative because there are some who say that when you look at the Gospels and you read about how Christ faced death as he contemplated it in the Garden of Gethsemane, there are some who argued that Jesus was afraid, that Jesus was showing signs of, of, of cowardice, okay? Remember in, in Gethsemane, he, he, he doesn't kneel and pray. He falls to the ground. He collapses in agony. He collapses and pleads with his closest friends to pray for him. Please. He says, my soul is overwhelmed to the point, with sorrow to the point of death. I'm going to die from a broken heart. I'm so overwhelmed. Oh my gosh. And, and, and Father, can you take this cup from me? Will you take this cup from me? But not as I will, but yours be done. He's known his whole, he's known for all eternity what his destiny was. And he certainly as, as, as the God man, he's known for his 33 years of life what his ultimate destiny would be. But in that moment, in that moment, he's crying out. And some might see that that is cowardly, fear, mm. letting that get the best of him. But Jesus was facing something, beloved, that Polycarp didn't face, that Philip didn't face, that Latimer and Ridley didn't face, which we believe is the reason why he sweat drops of blood, why he fell on his face and pleaded with God to take this cup from him. Those men did not have to face the wrath of Almighty there it God is. for there sin. It is. There it Those is. men did not have to bear their own wrath for their own sin, but rather, like Jesus, he, he actually received the wrath of God, not only just a sin that was not his own. He who knew no sin became sin for us. The wrath of God for all of his people of all time put on Christ. Yes. yes. Those men didn't have that. They did not. Those men didn't have to endure the wrath of God. They had no. the freedom yes. of grace. Yes, exactly. But Jesus, yes. Jesus, the God-man, yeah. Christ, who had perfect union with God the Father, now is going to have his Father's face turned away from him. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I mean, just think about that, Chris. We can't, our minds and our hearts cannot fully grasp what it is that Jesus did. The horror of what he endured. We can't. We just can't imagine. And do you think the God-man might 
ponder for a moment the angst of what he was about See, to face. But, is. but is it cowardly? Is it cowardly to pray? Is it cowardly to wonder? Is it cowardice, though? It's not the absence of fear, is it? Is it? I, I don't think so. Bravery, courage is, is, is facing fear and going through it anyway. It wasn't just, you know what it is, and yet it doesn't stop you from doing it anyway. Jesus was not a coward. Jesus was so brave. He was so courageous. He was so loving. He was so obedient. He was so faithful. He was so caring and, and nurturing yeah. and treasuring you that he went through that. He faced those things for you. And what does this have to do with the Apostles' Creed? What does this have to do with what we're looking at? The forgiveness of of sin. Wow. The forgiveness of sins. And Jesus stopped at nothing to procure your forgiveness. Yeah. That joy that was set before him is, is you're wrapped up in that. Yeah. You are the joy that was set before him yeah. that you your salvation would be saved. Yes. Yes. That you would be saved. So that's why you have, have a man, Jesus, going under excruciating stress of what he knows he's going to go through and to the point where he's sweating drops of actual blood coming out of his pores, but can still say, but not my will, but your yes. will be done. The reason why this is important, beloved, is because this is a part of the, the sacrifice of Christ, the forgiveness of sin that we don't really always embrace. And that is that word propitiation that you heard at the beginning of the podcast. Propitiation is a beautiful truth that John wrote about. He mentions it twice in 1 John, yep. that the writer of the Hebrews mentions and that Paul mentions in the book of Romans, that Christ's death is a propitiation of sin. And to be a propitiatory sacrifice simply means that the death of Christ averted the wrath of God. God is not angry with any of us when we sin. Now, how many of you actually believe that though? See, see. How many of us, when we sin, we go, oh my gosh, there it is, I did it again. I failed God again. He must be so frustrated with me. He must be so angry with me. I'm so angry at myself. I would be mad at me yeah. if, if I, kept, you know, I would be mad at me if someone on the other outside did this to me, kept doing the same things at all yeah. of the time. I would be mad. And so we think God must be mad. And the scriptures tell us that he can't be mad. It's not that he's not mad. It's that he can't be mad because the penalty was paid in full. The penalty of the wrath of God, his hatred of God for your sin was satisfied in the body of Christ. And therefore he now looks at you the way he looked at Jesus at the beginning of yes. his ministry coming up. I don't know yes. I say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well, well pleased. pleased. To the point where Zephaniah tells us that God sings <laughs> over us. He rejoices <laughs> over us. He has such great joy <sighs> in you. Yeah, the broken sinner that you say, oh, you just don't know how bad I am. You know what he does? He, he does. says, I love you and I have forgiven you and the cross. I take sin serious. Yeah. I took it so serious. I poured my wrath out on my son for you. Yeah. yeah. He does take it serious and he dealt with it seriously. He did. And so when you think of that line in the creed, the forgiveness of sin, think about this aspect of your salvation, that your God is not angry with you, that your God delights in you, cherishes Amen. you, loves you. You Amen. are forgiven. But we can say these things, but do you believe it? Right. Because, beloved, this is a truth that if you really, really believe it, it will change your life. If you really, really believe that God is not angry with you, it changes your relationship to sin. It changes your relationship to him. I hope we'll get to those yeah. uh, themes at some point. But it, this, this belief will positively change your life if... You believe it. It'll set you free, man. It truly will. Yes, we saw that we are redeemed. We have been, uh, Jesus is a ransom and, and we are set free. But sometimes we feel like we're so enslaved. We're still like, yeah. we're still trapped. It is. Right? We feel that way. But a propitiatory sacrifice tells us that we don't have to be. What a great message of good news of the gospel, man. It's like you want to have t-shirts that are say, ask me about propitiation. Because yeah. people don't know that, what that word means. People, that's true. We don't use that that's word, true. right? That's true. It's like, ask me about propitiation, yeah. right? That's it's right. like, you know, it's such a beautiful word. And, you know, if you get nothing else from this, let it be something you think about. Let it be something you really think about. Be a word that you're amazed by and yeah. becomes part of your vernacular. 
Oh, oh man. Amen. Ooh. God is not mad at you if you are in Christ. Amen. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. And God willing, I'll talk to you in a couple weeks. See you soon.